now moved to New Hampshire, it was time to celebrate by flying our new 10-year-old fun cub. We went to a nearby wooded area to do what we enjoy most, some RC bush flying. It was warm-up time. I wanted to get into the mindset of having obstacles around before jumping into the tunnel of terror. Oh yeah, nice push planter there, boys. Attempt two. Quick rudder heavy turn back to the runway to land. Time for the tunnel of terror. Up and over the leaves and we were into the clear. Now to turn her back around and do it again to land. <laughs> it was time to give it another shot. This time for the straight in approach. Now that the Tunnel of Terror was behind us, it was time for a little torque rolling in the woods. More on how to get comfortable with this later in the video. Up next, some attempts at a quick out and back over the water. This one was all about nailing the 180 degree turn and giving enough space to approach with some level of breathing room. Oh baby, we're here. That was firm. <laughs> Try two. Same deal, but this time I experienced some... Bank angle, bank angle, bank angle. Caution, terrain, decision height. Don't sink. <laughs> one more try. <laughs> That's the turn I wanted. Oh, yeah. We did have a spectator drop in unexpectedly. After visiting Chip and Dale, we realized there was an even bigger gap to the right over the water that we could try. It's definitely easy to get out, but turning around is what's not as easy. I like my hover idea. That's what I would do. <laughs> what do you mean? Hover and then flip it around in a hover? Yeah. I and mean, then you just push the nose down and you're on an approach. Yeah. This one required some chair flying first. A lot of what it takes to fly in these more technical areas is planning. The same goes for full scale bush flying. Yeah, there's trees there. Another quick 180, get on final, and land. Hello. <laughs> One more try. Avoid the branches, bring her around, and set her down. That was a good one. This video is for you, circle flyers. Next up, a quick tree tunnel S turn. Bring it around town. Ah, a little bouncer. Now it's time to prep for a quick hover under the bridge without the red hot chili peppers, though. It only made sense to remove any potential additional threats, including a dead vine. Here we go. This plane has taught me so much about the importance of being gentle and precise on the controls, and not goosing the throttle around unnecessarily. It took many crashes to learn these things over time, but I knew that in order to hover under the bridge, I would have to be as gentle as possible. The first attempted walk towards the bridge didn't feel right. Okay. Alright. Let's try it again. There we go. I decided not to test my luck with the bridge anymore and went out to do a couple more minutes of hovering over the water instead. One thing I regularly practice in wide open flying spaces is walking the plane while in a hover or torque roll in all orientations. This means walking the plane left, right, forward, and back mid hover, sort of like hover taxiing a helicopter. I found that it's crucial to be able to do this in open spaces before trying it in enclosed spaces without risking a crash. This all comes together, especially when you try tail touches, which tend to leave the plane in unplanned orientations post tail touch that require you to be prepared to correct the hover to prevent a crash as well. On top of that, being able to safely catch your plane mid hover could save you too in a lot of scenarios. Just be safe with this one though. Up next, over the river and through the woods with the fun cub. The first approach was landing between the two trees on a steeper hill. Yep, in a bush. We'll try that one again, but for now, let's cross the river with a bit more breathing room. Time for the steep approach again, this time avoiding the little bush on the hill. I figured it would be cool to see this one from the top of the hill too, so Ben came over to the other side of the river to check it out. 
Onto the next set, some fun out and backs over the water. All right, so I guess the plan is Zach is gonna go like that out there, turn around, and then we got this big hill here. He's gonna, gonna try and land up. Yeah, this is not gonna be pretty. I can give you that. With the tailwind. The downwind approach combined with a hill littered with twigs and branches was spooking me out a bit. Here goes nothing. Plenty of room out here, but yeah, then I'm downwind. Oh, that wasn't that bad. For the next one, I decided to cheat a bit and stand on the runway. Well, I cut some leaves, but... <laughs> Not bad. This one had a cool yep. look to it coming over all the greenery. got bit by a mosquito for you. The second attempt, Ben took one for the team to get the shot. I had to give it one more try. Hey! There you go. That's pretty good. Well, thanks, Ar. Third time's to try, I guess. Or, what the hell did I just say? Charm. <laughs> that was it for our first location, so it was time to plug in and prep for a flight at our second location. We warmed up with some ceremonial grass trimming with our sharp APC prop. And then prep for our first bush approach. I've always found this fun. During our exploring, we noticed a park bench or runway. Time for some more bush hovering. As well as unintentional cleaning of pine needles. I walked the plane out a bit and decided to do an impromptu out and back. I did my best to try and touch her down before some thicker roots. On to the next one. Hammerhead challenge, I guess. Take off above the trees, hammerhead, forward slip in. Lands, I guess. Oh God! By a gun. We'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> We're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> this was one where once we were above the trees, we realized that we're committed and also dummies because we didn't have a ladder if anything happened. I started with a quick hammerhead. Oh Lord! A forward slip. Branches. Go right over you and a touchdown over Ben. Up next was another out and back over the water with a lot more breathing room. Unfortunately, it ended with abrupt breaking in the form of a branch. Try two. This time I went a little wider in order to give myself room to get stabilized. Whoops, well, didn't want to take an unstable one, so I went back around. There we go. We took a few steps into the woods and found another out and back with a few more obstacles. It's always fun kicking the plane around with a rudder to line her up for these. A little rough runway there, folks. That was it for our fun cup bush flying shenanigans, so we decided to end the day with some fun impromptu float flying at a local lake, with some 10 plus year old float planes, one of which was going to be a remaiden for its first time being flown in easily over 10 years. We got not your armchair engineer Woody's own design, and uh, we're going to fly again, this time on the other side of the country. This is uh, technically a maiden for this movie. This bird is unique. The majority of high thrust line pusher prop seaplanes out there have the infamous tendency of nosing down when you add power and nosing up when you reduce it. 
Woody wanted to fix this issue and decided to design this bird in a way that would get rid of it. He promised to explain how he did so for us in a later video, but I can say personally that there truly aren't any pitch changes. Nice work, Woody. Time for the 10 plus year maiden flight. Uh, I forget what this thing was called. I think it was a GWS. Here it is. I don't know. Austin put some uh, Swiss markings on it and uh, put some floats on it and uh, we'll fly it. She got up quick and it was immediately clear that I was going to enjoy this bird. She was incredibly light. Looks pretty light. <laughs> oh, it is. GWS, man. One of those last manufacturers to ever produce stuff the right way. This bird was also oddly great at doing high alpha, most likely in part to the added vertical stab area. Oh, that wow, right in front of us. While flying around, some fun boater boys came up and started hootering and hollering the usual flying challenges at us. <laughs> Woo! Hey, if you're really good, you can land it in my hand. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was clear that the plane may hover, so I was wanting to give it a shot. Jeez. Yeah, it's getting it. There we go. Ever heard of the 80% rule? The idea is that when you're flying in front of people and nerves are flowing, it's best to fly to 80% of your abilities to avoid disaster. The boater boys got me amped up, so I decided to try hovering again, close to a tree, with a newer to me airplane, and... She's going in! Hey! She's right side up! Woo! It got reversed. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's floating out, actually, man. Okay, we're, we're good, we're good. There's your case in point on why you should always follow the 80% rule. Don't be me. Catch a fish? I got a pine cone. Thankfully, the bird was completely undamaged, so I went out to try and redeem myself. As the boater boys departed off into the sunset, it was time to do some step turns. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Happy landings, bounce one on force, and we'll see you next time with a new upload.